Hey there viewers, welcome back to the South Plain Auto Channel. So we've got this 2007 Dodge Caliber and the money lights on. Uh, we've got some other videos on this. Uh, it has one of the codes that it has stored in it is the P2004. Take a look at for the intake manifold runner uh, control valve or the IMRC valve or intake manifold tuning valve, whatever you want to call it, being stuck open. Um, now in this car, the uh, you know we showed in a previous video uh, you know how to diagnose that and you know what the deal is with that and you know how Chrysler recommends you just change the whole intake manifold they got an updated intake manifold updated valve and you know whatnot uh, the other portion of that is is the ECM update they've got a software update uh, because evidently these cars will actually sometimes when that valve works will actually set some erroneous code stating that you know the valve's not working or something thereabouts I don't know what exactly they do with the software but it is part of the process uh, you don't want to just go slap an intake on it or slap a valve in it you know now that it works and all of a sudden you're plagued with this code again you know what do you do uh, so like i say there is a service bulletin stating you know you have to update the software so i thought i'd make this video we don't do a lot of videos on reflashes you know especially aftermarket and the you know with the j2534 i thought i'd bring you along on this one uh chrysler's are a little bit different i think we've done plenty of videos on gm's and you know gm's pretty friendly aftermarket wise uh chrysler is not uh, you get zero tech support uh, they will not help you if you are not a dealer so you can't call them nothing they tell you no beans go pound salt so uh, i thought i'd show you the process that we use so right now i just got the hood up uh, i've got a laptop hooked up just regular windows 7 laptop got our uh, we're going to be using our bosch uh, uh, vci interface device uh, i've got a battery charger on it to set it to 10 amps just want to make sure our battery stays up to snuff and the pre-2010s take a little bit of different process to update so for what it's worth i'll bring you guys along and show you that uh, so i'm trying to show you guys the best i can here set up in the car um i should get a screen recorder make this easier but this is easier for me so uh you have to have an active subscription to uh mopar tech authority which is kind of nice because then you get all factory info you know wiring diagrams you know owner's manual every everything the dealer has uh, so what we're gonna do and the other thing I'll mention is it does not seem to be friendly in uh, Google Chrome uh, particularly if on, a, on your laptop if you're if you're updating uh, GM's and Chrysler's they run a different version of Java and that can get kind of confusing after a while so let me uh, I'm gonna grab the VIN we're gonna put in the VIN number actually we will come down to let's see you're gonna have to bear with me here um, through the process we're gonna to go to the J. Where do we just click? So Chrysler is a lot more difficult than some of the you know four other domestics. Ford and GM are quite easy. So we're gonna click on the J2534 flash application process. Uh, it's gonna open another screen here. Let me scroll down this, and we're gonna click on click here to download ECU programming files. Now this is gonna be from 09 to 96, 2010 and newer. They use a little different program, which is more user friendly, a little more automated, I guess so to speak. So we can actually, well, I guess we'll leave that one open for right now. Let me get, I'll get the VIN here typed in. I'll kick this right back on. All right, so we got the VIN typed in. So you can do this a couple different ways. So this is going to search for uh, software that's going to be available for that VIN or, you know, for this particular vehicle. So we're going to just submit this and then we come over here. Here's our flash parts list. We got the wireless control module, the CVT, uh, CCN. Yeah, the cabin compartment node, your analog brakes. Oh gosh, you know, tip them, steering angle sensor, but then we come down here to PCM and here are all the available different PCM part numbers and it makes a difference, you know, manual, uh, CVT, you know, California Federal, all-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, this and that and the other. So you have to make sure that you're going to pick the right programming file because these programming files you pick manually, uh, I found it's easiest to pick it by the part number on the ECM. So we come down here. Uh, our part number on our ECM currently is uh, 6802719 Adam Adam. The newest update is the same part number and ends with an Adam Frank. So I'm going to select that. We're going to download that file. Now because I've got my Java set up, I can't remember what version I'm running uh, for uh, diagnosing GMs. I'm going to type in that VIN number again. Um, I'm going to allow it to run just this one time. It, like I say, it gets a little kind of your best bet when you're when your flash update in is to have a dedicated ECM for each individual make and model. I'll put in the VIN again, and now we're just going to select by part number, and this time it should run through for us. 
All right, so I think instead of typing in the VIN again, I'll show you how we can do it by part number. Uh, so the part number is 680-27191-AA. So that's our current part number. Is that right, Hannah? What? Uh, 680-27191-AA? Yeah. Okay, so I'm verified it is the right number. So we, we just put in a part number this time. Uh, you can do it by TSB number two, and there is TSB on this, so, and then you can see it pops up, the new number, just with a different uh, suffix of alpha foxtrot, I guess it would be. So we're going to click download, and it should pop up down here. you got a little spinning wheel, and it's going to automatically load it in the Chrysler application for us. At least it should. We'll turn our key on. Files downloaded successfully, so we'll collapse these. I'm going to come into where I keep our Chrysler software. We're going to pop this up. We're going to connect to a 2009 and earlier. We've read all the hokey pokey. We're going to select our pass through device, which is our Bosch device. We'll click OK. We'll click Start. And it should talk to our car at this point. Uh, do you wish to update GPEC ECU to part number 68? 027191AF. Yes, we do. Now it's starting the process and it's going to go through and fuel pumps running consistently to shut back off and it's flashing the ECM and this could take you know a lot of lights and stuff for flashing on the dash. We just got to wait for this to get over now and take it from there. So you'll see it'll start loading up the bottom there. And when you're doing this, you know, it is important to keep the battery maintained. Uh, don't be opening and closing doors and playing with power windows and all that stuff. And be darn sure you don't kick the data link connector out. So there's our Bosch VCI. See, we got some lights on the dash. I think the brake light was on. That is one problem that's that you want to fix, so we'll be checking that out also. So wait for this to finish up. Just about done. Hopefully we didn't make a brick. <laughs> Please turn key off. Whoa, hang on there, folks. Always knocking you guys all around. Mission key is off. We'll click OK. A lot of times there'll be instructions like this at the end of a flash. And just wait for it. Do what it tells you. Turn the key on. Key is on. Hit OK. A lot of times when you're doing GMs and stuff, you know you'll have to you know go through and do the crank relearn and some other set parameters. All right, so flash process completed, successful. We'll click OK. You know, theoretically, we can plug in our Varus and we can double check our part number. Uh, but I'll tell you right now, we're good to go. I see the check engine lights flashing, so that indicates that everything has been reset. Let me just make sure that the car starts. Ooh, that's always a good sign. So, like I said, our red brake lights on. Car's cold right now, so it's up on a little bit of a fast idle. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the process. For those of you that are interested, while well, we're logged right into the Tech Authority, uh, you just put in a P2004. You'll see there is a bulletin on it. Uh, so that bolt-in number is 18032-07. Uh, let's see here. It indicates right to us that it is a flash programming update. So if you guys want to check that out, you can probably Google search that online. 07 to 08. Uh, let's see, 07 only calibers, I guess. So certain VIN breakouts, of course this car does fall under that breakout. Uh, talks about you know intake manifold uh, replacement, blah blah blah. Of course, in our case, we actually did have a, you know a failed valve, so uh, a little different story, but still had to go through this update process. Right, so we're plugged back in with the virus. Now we should be able to come under miscellaneous functions, and we should be able to get the ECU part number. And there we go. We can see our updated part number right there, and with the Adam Frank. So sweet. 
And there you have it folks, that's the second part of the manifold repair, that P2004 on this Dodge Caliber where you uh, where we fixed the tuning valve, but I had to finish the process by doing the update. Uh, I know this video won't pertain to everybody, and we'll get lots of thumbs downs, uh, but that's okay. Because I know a lot of you guys in the aftermarket are really concerned about, you know, ECM flashing. Is it easy? Is it hard? I would say it's both. You know, some are a pain in the neck. You know, I had to do an OnStar module the other day uh, on this GM truck that was pulling down a high-speed network. That turned into a friggin' disaster. You know, you end up you're on the phone for three, four hours with you know a place in Texas that makes the part and this and that, and trying to get the you know the VIN mismatch problem taken care of, and whatever. So uh, I guess they all have their issues. I don't do a ton of programming, so uh, Keith over at New Level does. He does you know daily, you know five, six a day. You know, he does over 20 cars a day, so he does lots of programming, Euro stuff, domestics, Asians, all that. I just do the big three: Hyundai, Kia, Honda, Toyota you know, stuff like that. So I haven't ran into a big problem yet. I haven't made any bricks and hopefully you guys don't, uh, but that's always the potential. Um, anyhow, hope you guys liked the video. Questions, comments, concerns in the comment box below. Always you can find us on our socials and Patreon and all that. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.